the schmo with the pro with Coach Jason Perillo inside the sauna of the Ruka Gym, Pusta Mesa, California. How we doing? How we doing, schmo man? It's always great to see you, buddy. It's great to see you, too. Good thing this thing isn't on because we'd be schwitzing all over each other during this interview. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 it's a good thing. What's oh the sauna? <laughs> yeah, I thought you were talking about the camera. I'm like, holy shit, what are we doing then? <laughs> well, the red lights on. Yeah, well, the red lights on. I didn't, I didn't notice it. Um, yeah, it's not on, so we can uh, have a proper conversation without sweating like madmen. Yeah, it's always good to catch up with you. You train a lot of great killers inside this gym. Let's start with Cheeto Vera. The schmo just interviewed him, coming off that big win against Rob Font. He's talking about who he wants next. He's talking about Pewter Jan. Pewter Jan calling him out on social media. You like that fight, coach? Oh, yeah. I, I love any fight for Cheeto in the top five. I mean, Cheeto's definitely coming in his own right now. He made a, 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 a great statement with Rob Font in this last fight, and he showed really he can fight with any of these guys, and, and I truly, obviously, as a coach, believe he can beat any of these guys. And um, I see Cheeto definitely uh, being a world champion of the UFC in time to come. He was calling for Dominic Cruz for the longest time, and obviously it seems like that ship has sailed. Has that been a fight that you guys have been preparing for over the past couple of years, or no, because no ink to paper has happened? Yeah, you know, it's, I did, never have we, you know, really... T- Came to this gym, went in the octagon, and you know started breaking down Dominic Cruz because really, over the last you know couple of years, few years with Cheeto has been just developing Cheeto and the best fighter he can be, so he can actually be any of these guys. You know, if he fights his fight, he goes out there and he can do he can fight anywhere in the cage. Cheeto, he can kick, he can punch, he can wrestle, he can grapple, he can jujitsu, he can do it all. So you know we're just you know developing his game and the highest level we can get it so uh we can go in front of any of these guys Dominic Cruz Yan Sterling any of them you know at the end of the day Cheeto's got to be ready to you know be a world champion so he he can't really try to look to see who could pose more a problem than another um Dominic Cruz obviously he's not you know he's he's been spotty as far as how much he's been fighting over the last couple years so you know he I don't think he's a The threat of Dominic Cruz isn't something that's even sitting in the back of my mind right now. I think we're really more focused on the the guys ahead of Cheeto in the lineup. Luke Rockhold, he's back in the gym, 37 years young. He was initially supposed to fight Sean Strickland a few months back, had the injury with the back, and now he's back in action against Paulo Costa. Luke Rockhold, Michael Bisping, both inside the same gym. How did that happen? How did you connect the two? There's a story behind this, Mr. Perello. What is it? Yeah, well, the story is, I mean, it goes back to back when Luke was Strike Force champion, to be honest. Uh, you know, Luke Rockhold is a good friend of Pat Tenori, the founder of Ruka, and he brought him in here to work with me, you know, one week. And I'm like, hey, man, while you're in town, why don't we, uh, you know, move? I got Bisbing, I got a fight coming up with Bisbing, so you want to move around with him a little bit. That happened. They moved around, they sparred. Bisbing talked a little shit. Obviously, that started their little feud over the, the handful of years. <clears throat> but after Biz being retired, you know, he saw he saw Luke was coming in here. I talked to him. I said, you know, Luke's coming down. He goes, I don't give, you know, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be offended by any of it. You know, and it's not like me and Luke have been trained like Mad Men together. He's, he kind of, he's been spotty as much as he's been coming in here. But he has been coming in here as far as any other gym, you know, quite a bit over the last couple of years. Last year and a half, I'd say. Um, but one day I told Biz being, Bisbing said he was coming down. I said, Luke's going to be there. But he said, that's ah, cool. You know, and they came in. They crossed each other's paths and shook each other's hands. You know, I like to say out of due respect to me and to the gym that they weren't going to, you know, be uh, two fucking assholes to each other. But at the end of the day, bygones are bygones. That's all in the past. It's a lot. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's easier to forget when it's been, I mean, time heals all wounds, right? You know, and at the end of the day, Bisbing's been retired. He's not looking to fight anybody. Although maybe he is. Bisbing's always ready for a fight. But um, yeah, it all, you know, it, it, it's, it started off ugly, stayed ugly for a lot of years, but those two were able to be uh, two gentlemen towards each other when, it all, when it's all said and done. The great facilitator, Mr. Jason Perillo, <laughs> boxing background yourself, former professional fighter. You just talked about Biz being and potentially returning for a fight. The only thing that the schmo can see maybe happen would be that boxing match against Jake Paul. Yeah, I had a feeling that would come up. That guy gets a lot of attention. And uh, 
Bisbee would fight him. I mean, obviously, you would fight him. I, I don't know how the athletic commission is going to go ahead and pass Bisbee on that one. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he's done it before. He can do it again. Um, I, I see no problem with Jake Paul and Michael Bisbee. Michael Bisbee's a fighter, you know, and so is, you know, Jake Paul showing that he's he's a little bit of a fighter himself these days. And uh, he's young, obviously, and he's flamboyant, and he's got that personality, a similar personality that Bisbee probably had back in his, you know, when he was an early guy. But, ah, you know, I, I, I again, that's that, that sits further in the back of my mind than the Dominic Cruz fight. You know, I don't, it's not in my, it's not in my, my eye, my sight, it's not in my, my brain to, you know, think about. I'm thinking about the fights that matter, not that if Michael Bisping wasn't fighting, it wouldn't matter. It mattered a lot to me because obviously that's my man. I love him to death. But I'm focused on the fights, you know, where we're at right now. I got, you know, McKenzie five in the world. I got Cheeto five in the world. You know, Luke, we'll see what happens with Luke, you know, if he, if he, if he could stay consistent in here. You know, I know he bounces around and trains different places, which I don't have a problem with. I just, I like to see... <clears throat> I like to see athlete, you know, in, in one place getting one direction rather than, you know, three or four different directions from three or four different guys. But that's a, that's another story in itself. Um, but again, as far as Michael Bisping and Jake Paul, I, I love to see Michael Bisping give Jake Paul an ass kicking, but it's not even in my mind. You brought up her name. That's where the schmo was going next. Mackenzie Dern, number five strawweight in the world. Her game's completely changed since coming to you, moving from Black House MMA. Where have you seen the biggest evolution in her striking since you began working with her? Because, listen, Perillo, the schmo's not going to sugarcoat it. You've changed her for the better, and look where she's at now. Yeah, when Mackenzie came in here, she's really raw. I mean, I know she has some experience. She has some fights and whatnot. She had bounced around to a couple, you know, you know, good gyms. Um, she's really green, you know. She... And she's come a long ways. Like I said, I mean, she and she's got further to go too, and she will get there. I, I her progression is getting, you know, improving week by week. Um, really, the, the the most the biggest thing with Mackenzie is just trying to get her, you know, based on her feet, get her balance, you know, be able to get her understanding what's going on in there because, you know, she's so you you know she's competed in, in close quarters in the grappling tournaments her whole life. You know, she had thousands of jujitsu matches. You know, it's a whole different area, obviously, on her feet. You know, but I I, I definitely try to get her to understand it in the same way she understands grappling if that makes sense you know i i'm not going to make sense of her over over a, a, a quick question on a uh, on an interview but at the end of the day she's come a far ways and and i do see her developing even better i, I do th see her actually being a little bit of a threat on her feet at some point governor and running bj penn of hawaii when you first found out he was dabbling into the political world what was the reaction I, I was I was extremely excited for him. It, it's right. It, it's perfect for BJ Penn. BJ Penn, what people don't realize at the end of the day, he's, you know, he pays attention to politics. He pays attention to history. He's a historian buff. You know, he's he, we'd be in camps and he would just be on the internet reading history, day in day out, talking about hey Perello Peasy, you gotta you know what do you I'm like fuck. I'm worried about a fight, Biz. I, I, BJ, we need to get you in a fight. I don't give a shit about, you know, what's going on in the in, in this type of, you know, in the political world. But, you know, BJ cares a lot. He cares about Hawaii more than, I mean, BJ loves Hawaii. He loves his state. He he, he really is he, he really is a man of the people out there, you know. And at the end of the day, he's like, you know, who else is going to do it? And for me, it gives BJ a fight. BJ is a true fighter. He always wanted it, it, we couldn't, nobody could talk him uh, out of not fighting, you know, over his last, you know, couple of years of fighting. So, you know, and he needs something to focus on. And I think he'll put his whole heart into it. He'll put all his energy into it. And I think he'll really, you know, make some, some good changes and good, good, good progress for Hawaii. Because at the end of the day, you know, he's not really going out there doing it for money. You know, BJ's done well for himself and is, you know, in, in, you know, he's doing well for himself out there in Hawaii, I believe. I don't think it's something that he needs to do financially. I think it's just something that he wants to go out and, you know, he wants to go out and, and, and make a difference in Hawaii. And you got to really respect him for that. And fight for the people. You got to fight for the people. You know, why not? That's what he fought for. And I'll say it again. When BJ was fighting, he was always fighting for Hawaii. I mean, he, 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 
when these guys fight and they become champion and they get the attention they do and the love they do from their home hometown or you know their home country or whatever it is you know wherever they're at wherever their home is you know they they want to give that love back to those people you know you go you, you spend he spent years being a champion and, and and people just admire him and, and looking up to him and whatnot and you know i think it, it, in all fairness he he loved that feeling he loved that who doesn't love that notoriety who doesn't love that type of fame in a sense to where people adore you you know they don't even know you and they adore you and they look up to you you know and i think you know they always were there for him and like he says he wants to be there for them we get a final message for all the Jason Prillo fans out there worldwide. There's about what six of you guys out there. My my family. <laughs> no, I mean uh, I, I I wouldn't necessarily look at myself as someone to have fans necessarily, but you know anybody that you know. And I obviously you get message from people that that watch your work and, and and compliment you on your work. So you know I'm always you know very thankful to anybody that you know gives me a good little pat on the back makes anybody feel good one of the best coaches in the game mr jason perillo he's the pro i'm the schmo the ruka jim can we turn on this sauna the schmo wants to get steamy up in here we're out <laughs>